So now let's look at a few quirks of nested definitions. So the first thing we might, it might be implicitly uh, understood by us, by all of you, sorry, um, is that uh, anything that you define inside a function is unavailable outside of that function, right? So this is scoped, as you might imagine. So the scope of a function means basically, you know, the body of the function. Any variable you declare there is unavailable outside of that function declaration, right? So in this case, I define the z, a temporary value z, and I return x plus z, which would be x plus 3, uh, meaning I cannot use z outside. So this z does not exist, does not refer to the, the z defined inside f, right? And this is something that is common, um, known as lexical scoping, and we'll actually go into a bit more detail about this. For now, let me just write the example. Uh, let me just do code errors dot racket. Okay, lang racket, and then I'm gonna do this example, and I wanna just show you the error. Okay, see, it's saying unbound identifier because Z is only defined in this function. Okay, so this is example one. Okay, so next, let's look at the next slide. Another thing that is important to, to, to know is that there's some shadowing going on and shadowing is when when you ha you are in a way, you're not redeclaring a variable, but you're, you're defining, like, look look at this example. You have a function where we have a parameter called x. And what we do is we define a, a local variable also called x. And what rec does is it will ignore whatever value you had before. And now, you know, in this, in this function call, this x here in blue actually refers to the closest definition of x. Right, so in this case, it refers to this x, but not the parameter, so the local x. Uh, similarly, with z, because z was defined outside of the function, we can shadow it by defining a local uh, variable z. And now, in the function call, the z in blue refers to the, the local variable z. Okay, so if I were to run this, And this might be, sometimes there are mistakes created because of this, right? Because if you forget that you somehow defined a parameter and then you define a variable with the same name, you kind of lose the, the parameter value. So it's something to be wary. There's no error, you just, values are silently ignored. And this is true also in other programming languages, such as Java, for instance. Um, so in this case, what we have, we have z, which is 10, and here x, so we're calling it here, so therefore here x equals one, uh, but here, hereafter, x equals three, and we also know that um, z equals, sorry, z equals 10, right? And hereafter, z equals 20, and now x equals three, and therefore the result is 23, right? Because x is the 23, that's why you get 23. Okay, and just so you believe me, I'm gonna change this to 30, so this would be 30, result should be 33. And indeed it is. Okay, so now let's roll back, roll back, back, call it again still working okay let me comment this out however and this is where the the subtlety becomes a bit more annoying you can cannot redeclare a variable okay so if you write it if you write this code okay and if you try to call it Actually, I don't even think you need to call it. Yeah, if you try to define this function, it does not work because you're redeclaring 
sorry, redefining A. And that is different than shadowing. And that is disallowed. And you will get an error. So it says duplicate binding name. Right? So if you have an A here, you comment this A. This works. This is completely fine. But if they're in the same scope, meaning in the same function, or at the same level of the module, you'll also get an error. So if I were to do A plus 1, that also gives me an error. And confusingly, and this is one reason I really dislike people, uh, I really discourage people from using the interpreter. So if you try to use the interpreter and you define A10, and then you do define A20, you don't get an error. And it prints out the most recent declaration. So which means that you should never use the interpreter because it's not racket. It's something else. Okay, it's something similar to racket that will just confuse you. Do not try to avoid using the interpreter as much as possible. Focus on calling scripts. That's what the record language, the real record language is. Okay. Okay, so this is the last little quirk. Next, we're going to go back to this same exercise. 